Hi, welcome to Theory of Computation. In this video session, we will discuss about regular expressions and its fundamentals. Regular expressions are algebraic descriptions of the languages accepted by the finite automata. And the language accepted by the finite automata are called regular languages. So basically, regular expressions are algebraic, algebraic descriptions of the regular languages. And since we have the algebraic description, it is a declarative way of expressing the same language. When we write, say a language, language is a set. So we, we can have set notation, that is mathematical way of expressing the uh, language. And with finite automata, we use graphical representation to represent the same language. Now we have one more way of expressing the language, which is the algebraic description, which is declarative. And the algebraic expression is a string. And this helps us to express any language which is regular as an expression which we can pass it to any system that will process the language. So we have a hold on how to give a language as an input to a system that is processing that language. For example, we have the Unix command grep where we search for some string and we can express the pattern of the string using regular expression or we have the lexical analyzer generator which is lex or flux given the regular expression this will this lexical analyzer generator will generate the equivalent deterministic finite state automata for us so this is an automated tool to generate the lex or the flux is an automated tool to generate the finite state machine given the language expressed in the algebraic notation which is the regular expression what are the operations that we can do with the regular expression since regular expression is used to express a language in algebraic notation we can perform any operation that is valid for a language and we know that language is a set so we can perform union of two languages l and m denoted as l union m and for example consider l to be 0011011 and m to be null string and 001 then L union M will be the set union of these two sets. So we will have the null string and 0, 0, 001 is available in both the sets. So we have a single representation of 0, 0, 001 and then 10111. The next operation is the concatenation. Concatenation of two languages L and M is denoted as LM. And if L is the same set, 0010111 and m is the same set Z as that of the previ previous example which is epsilon and 001 then lm will be we have 001 from l and the epsilon from the second set and 10 from the first set and we have epsilon from the second set and then 111 from l and epsilon from m and then we will concatenate 001 from L with 001 from M. Now we have all the strings from L concatenated with 001 from M. So this is LM. The next operation is closure. And closure of a language is denoted by L star which is the union of the concatenation of languages which is indicated by li and i goes from 0 to infinity any number that is greater than or equal to 0 so it starts from 0 and goes up to infinity so we have l0 union l1 union l2 etc and what is l2 l2 is l concatenated with l and this goes up to infinity suppose if l is 0 1 1 L star will include the epsilon which is L0 
and L is this one. So union L and what is L2? So L concatenated with L. So we will have 0, 0 and 0, 1, 1. Then we have 1, 1, 0 and 1, 1, 1, 1. So this is these four strings belong to L2. And sorry, we will write this as this one L2. Now let's see how to build regular expression. So this is inductive definition. So we have the basis, the constants which are null string and the empty set are regular expressions denoting the language. L of epsilon is the set containing the null string and language of null set is null set itself. So this epsilon is a regular expression and null set the phi is a regular expression and if there is a symbol a that belongs to input symbol sigma then we have a as a regular expression any symbol that belongs to sigma is a regular expression and the language of l of a is the set containing the input symbol a and any uh, capital letter that we use to denote the language is a regular expression so any language is a regular expression and any symbol in the input symbol set is a regular expression and the epsilon or the phi is a regular expression the inductive definition is like this if e and f are two regular expressions then e or f is a regular expression we represent using e plus f is a is a regular expression representing the language which is the union of l of e and l of f so l of e plus f is nothing but l of e union l of f the next way to generate the regular expression is if E and F are two regular expression then the concatenation of the regular expressions E F is a regular expression representing the language which is the concatenation of L of E and L of F. So L of E F is L of E concatenated to L of F. The next way to generate the regular expression is if E is a regular expression, then E closure is a regular expression representing the closure of L of E. That is, L of the language of E closure is equal to the language of E, the whole closure. And the last step is, if E is a regular expression, then the same expression E enclosed in bracket is also a regular expression and the language of the E regular expression E enclosed in bracket will be same as that of L of E. The language doesn't change but we can additionally have the brackets. The precedence of the regular expression operators, the default is if you have the regular expression with all the uh, three operations and no explicit brackets are specified then closure operation gets the top priority followed by the concatenation and next is the union and this is the default priority we can change the priorities of these operators by explicitly enclosing the expressions in the parenthesis and whichever expression is within the parenthesis that will get the top priority. Now let's try to write some regular expressions. The set of all binary strings that begin with 110. Now how to write the regular expression? We have to begin the string with 110. So we will have 110 and it should accept any binary string. And so we will represent that using 0 or 1 the closure I can get any number of zeros or 1s followed by this 110 so this will be the regular expression and the set of all binary strings that have exactly 
three ones. I should allow only three ones. So I can have any number of zeros. So zero star, which is zero or more occurrences of zero, and I can have a one and followed by any number of zeros and one followed by any number of zeros one followed by any number of zeros see i can have consecutive ones as well because i can this is zero or more occurrences of ones zero star is nothing but zero or more occurrences of one so i can nullify these one these zeros and create consecutive three ones but one can one can appear only three times so zeros can be anywhere before ones or after ones or in between ones the next example is the set of all binary strings that have odd number of zeros this is slightly tricky to write okay so we will divide this into two parts okay one as we will allow only one zero to appear that is we have one zero which is odd number the other is we will allow even number of zeros to appear and then finally terminate with the single zero to ensure that it has odd number of zeros so when we have only one zero we have this zero and it can have any number of ones followed by it zero or more occurrences of one and this one will ensure that we have only ones being generated using this um, closure operation so we have any number of ones generated followed by a single zero and any number of ones this is one part the other part is i can have a string with even <clears throat> even number of zeros that is we can have a zero we can have any number of ones followed by a zero so we ensure even number of zeros and this string can appear any number of times and finally we will terminate the string with a single zero which will ensure that we have odd number of zeros followed by any number of ones writing the regular expression from the description of the language is little tricky but we can achieve this art by repeated practice in the next video lecture we will discuss in detail about the equivalence of the regular expression with finite state meshes thank you for watching this video